Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. We have had some fun uh, with some rope physics. We are uh, trying out some different uh, cut the rope style games. Um, the latest one we made was uh, this scenario where we've got the candy, that's the green ball, connected to two ropes. Um, they're oscillating a little bit. I probably need to increase their spring stiffness, but the, um, the drag force, or excuse me, the damping force that we have set up um, actually causes them to settle out pretty quickly. Um, the goal is to get the candy into the red basket here. Uh, so the solution for this problem is to cut the rope at this point and then cut it somewhere in here. But let's suppose I missed it, as I have done on several videos, and I say, okay, I'll wait for it to come back on the next swing. Well, since I've got the damping force set up, uh, it's actually kind of hard to get it on the second try because uh, the amplitude of this pendulum swing is decreasing every time. In fact, this is just now the third swing, and I'm pretty sure there's not really any way it's going to get into the basket there. Now in the official cut the rope game, the answer to that are those little blue blowers that uh, are usually strategically aligned, you know, somewhere right here where you tap on them, they, uh, they, they shoot out a little burst of air and that gives the candy a little bit of velocity. Um, rather than recreating that, since I'm probably already um, infringing upon their uh, uh, design copyright already. Uh, I thought what we'd do would be to add in something a little bit different, which would be let's suppose we add in a wind to the game that goes everywhere. Um, so that way it would affect not just the candy, but also the rope here. So what I'm envisioning doing is uh, adding in a, a, a wind, basically that would blow horizontally, probably toward the basket, and put in a slider on the side here to where the player could control how fast the wind is blowing. So they can turn the wind off, they can turn the wind up. I suppose, now I think about it, I could even make it a, a, a positive and negative scale to where they can have the wind uh, blowing uh, left or right. Um, so let's let me make a note of that to myself, wind left or right. And another thing I need to think of is a way to indicate how the wind is blowing. Um, so maybe either some particles kind of floating around in the air or maybe an arrow or something like that um, just to indicate the wind strength. So what we need to do is go back into the code. <clears throat> um, and uh, basically what I need to do is I need to change the drag force. So I've got the drag force, or excuse me, the damping force. Uh, I've got the damping coefficient set there. Oh, I do call it drag down below, don't I? Well, technically it's a damping force, not a drag force, because it goes like the uh, speed to the first power, not the speed to the second power. Um, let's go ahead and save this as another version. A basket with wind. There we go. <clears throat> and then we'll take this as, instead of drag, damp. It, the, the code obviously doesn't care what I call it, but just for my own sanity as a physicist, that, that'll help me. Um, basically what we do here is instead of uh, this being just the, uh, the, the, the atom's velocity, this now needs to be the atom's velocity minus the velocity of the wind. So we'll call that vel wind. Um, and so I, what I need to do first before I get into all the sliders and controls and everything is to kind of get an idea of how uh, uh, how large of a value this thing should have because obviously I don't want to have too strong a value where it'll just blow the, the rope off the screen. But I also don't want it to be so small that when you turn it on it goes from being still to you know going like this. It's not going to get into the basket like we saw earlier. So let's try out a few different values of vel wind up here. Um, may as well define that wherever we have B. Vel wind equals, this is going to be a vector, and we'll call this the wind velocity. <clears throat> At least this will be the initial. And let's see here. So I want to, let's see, I definitely want this to be in the x direction, not in the y or the z. At least not for right now. Although I suppose I could set up slider for the x and a slider for the y, that would be fun. I don't want to set up a slider for the z, because once this thing starts spinning in the z direction, I, it will have a hard time getting it in the basket. Actually, maybe not, that might be fun to try. Okay, I keep, you know, every time I plan this thing, I think, okay, I'm gonna make this one little module, and then I end up saying, oh, I could make this into like 10 different modules, and yeah. 
some of that I leave to you as 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 homework, quote unquote, to try out and uh, leave me a link in the comments below to what you do with the code. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. So let's think of it this way. The length of this whole scenario is how much? Uh, let's see. Sort of the natural length is the length of the rope. So the length of the rope is... Uh, going to be n atoms times L0. So if I think about it, uh, my natural length scale is going to be n atoms times L0. And my natural time scale is going to be dt. So that's sort of the natural velocity scale for the problem. Um, <clears throat> only I don't want uh, to be defining that here because I haven't defined n atoms uh, yet, nor have I defined uh, dt yet. So let's go down. dt gets defined down here. <clears throat> let's put velwin down here. So for example, this is going to mean that within one iteration of the code, the wind is going to have blown with a velocity that takes it across the entire length of the rope. That's a bit strong, right? Um, so actually maybe a better one to do would be L0 because then it's going the length of one atom to atom distance in dt. Um, so that still seems a bit uh, <clears throat> still seems a bit large. So let's try out a 0 0.1 here. So this is now going to be 0 0.1 to the right. Uh, 0 0.1 L0 over dt to the right and basically it's this number that I'm going to be adjusting to get an idea of what the maximum I would want would be. Um, let me just review down here that I got the damping force set up correctly. So this is a negative multiplying this negative. So now pretend for just a second that the <clears throat> that the atom end that we're looking at is stopped moving, that it's at rest. So that would mean there would be a force in the negative, negative, X direction, aka the positive X direction, which is what I would expect if the wind is blowing in that direction. So let's run this and see what a difference that makes. Okay, so this is definitely behaving differently. There's a little bit of a gust blowing this way. So let's see what happens when I cut this. <clears throat> okay, so I do get a little bit uh, uh, more of a swing there. Oh, actually that in fact wins the game for me. That blows that over um, enough. So that's kind of cool. Um, of course, me cutting is not going to do anything because it's it has stopped iterating forward. Okay, so that's kind of neat. Um, <clears throat> so 0 0.1 might be a little bit strong. Um, let's try cutting that in half because obviously I still want it to be a little bit of a challenge for the player. And actually, I suppose this could be a number that you um, that you change based on the level that you design. Um, oh, that one just barely gets a win. Okay, uh, and let's see. So now it's not, it'll, it'll so, so what you're going to notice is that there's going to be an asymmetry to the rope swinging because it's going to swing wider on this side than it is on this side because right now it has the wind pushing against it. And then next it's going to have the wind pushing in favor of its motion. Although, oh, although that was not strong enough to get it on the third try. <clears throat> Okay, so why don't we compromise with a point oh hmm. Well, here's what I'm thinking is the 0 0.1 was a little bit too strong, although you probably actually want it to be a bit strong. Uh, you probably want to have the range go up to be a bit strong because you want the user to have to overcorrect and undercorrect for the wind. So let's do this. Let's figure out the... Um, VW max for the maximum velocity of the wind and let's set that equal to 0 0.075 so this is the maximum wind divided by uh, L naught over DT <clears throat> so we'll start with VEL wind equal to 0 and then we'll make it to where you can change the velocity of the wind uh, by uh, clicking and dragging on the slider. <clears throat> so what I need to do next is create this slider control now that I've got my wind set up uh, decently. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Where do I go into? Okay, here's where I go into the grab um, function. 
So what I need to do here is uh, I need to import as a global my slider global uh, we'll call it wind slider <clears throat> okay and the way I want to do this um, I don't want it to be part of this loop down here the way I'm going to do this honestly is just copy and paste from how I did this with FTL uh, so in the FTL beam optimizer program I had the same type of situation here so we're going to copy and paste that need to um, indent that a little bit uh, I need to indent, indent that one more <clears throat> or de-indent excuse me uh, so if event.pick equals what do I call it winds underscore slider thank you to um, I forget who but somebody reminded me in the comments I can put underscores in my um, variable name so that they're a little bit more readable so I've got uh, <clears throat> this thing drag pause which is the position to which you drag it and so what this is going to do is it's going to say is, so now what you're going to do is um, the movement of the mouse is going to be associated with the command move <clears throat> and why did I need room list of I and fram list of I there so let me go back down in here to the ah here we go Define, move, event, an object. Okay, so it's calling it with those arguments. So I don't need, I don't have a frame around this thing anymore. <clears throat> Although I do have, um, we've got the wind slider. Although I do have, uh, I'm going to have a little vertical bar to indicate it, so I'll probably need that. Let's just stick with the wind slider for right now. I can add the other one later. So I need to define now a move command. I need to define a drop command. Now that needs to get indented. Uh, no, that needs to come out one. There we go, because that was at the end of the previous one. Yeah, yeah. So now I need to define move and I need to define drop. So let's just copy this here. Define move, etc., etc. We will translate it to our new uh, code as we go. <clears throat> so we're moving an object, and we've got the drag pause. Uh, I think I need to make that a global now. Let me double check from up here. Yep, I do need to make drag pause a global. I know I can make my global variables a list, and I will probably clean that up later meaning when it gets to be a pain for me. Okay. Um, yes, I do want this to stay in the XY plane. In fact, um, I even want <clears throat> this thing to stay in, I want this thing to stay along a certain vertical axis on the y, in the Y direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's get this part done. Let's let's get the thing translated first. So new position equals scene mouse project. That's fine for now. New position equals doesn't equal drag position. So if the mouse is moved, offset for where the ball was touched. I don't remember having that. <clears throat> Object position. Uh, it gets added new position minus drag position. Okay, cool. And then the frame, I don't have to worry about anymore. And now drag position equals new position. Okay. So, okay. We'll run it like this and then I'll worry about the, the snapping it down later. Um, and then I need to define the drop command for def drop. Oh, and okay, this is where I do the snapping, that's right. <clears throat> Copy, paste. All right, so we're gonna define drop event. Uh, I don't need an in rooms anymore, but I do need a, um, do I need drag underscore pause here? I guess not. Um, 
I do need the wind slider wind underscore slider so that way if it's grabbing the wind slider right now wind slider is the only thing it it grabs and drops but just in case um, or that it moves and drops but just in case I add something else later scene unbind scene unbind okay that's important and then I don't need to check over a list anymore but what I do need is to check for what the event pick is so if that's equal to wind slider <clears throat> um, right edge okay that might be useful later <clears throat> let's maybe comment that out for right now because I might need that in a minute of course I'll have to import the right edge and top edge and all that stuff <clears throat> okay, so if it is the wind slider, I need it to drop it. Well, I don't, I don't, well, let's see here. I, let's see, what I want to do is I want to have it to where it'll drop it along just some kind of vertical axis. That way it's not somebody sliding it around this way. Um, but I think we'll worry about that later. Let's worry about getting this uh, to... Let's worry about getting this, um, just the, the, the actual dragging set up first. And I do need to change the wind velocity as I do this. So let's make a global, is it windvel or velwind? Yep, velwind, excuse me. <clears throat> let's make a global velwind. Okay, cool. Um, so now I want to set it up to where the Velwin scales with the position of the slider. So I need global, uh, what was it, VW Max? Excuse me, VW, no underscore max, okay. VW max, and okay, so what I need now is I need to think about the maximum range for this thing. Uh, oh, actually, excuse me, I don't want this to go under here. I want this to go under the move, right? Because I want it to be uh, updating it as it moves. Let's go with global, velwind, global, VW slider, excuse me, wind slider, global VW max. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what we'll do now is if the uh, object equals wind slider, so if the object is the wind slider, then we need to adjust the wind velocity. Cool. <clears throat> so let's do this. Let's say, object.pause. I'm trying to think, do I want to do this based on where the thing is or how, or just by how much it's changed by? I feel like <clears throat> if I just adjust it by how much the thing is changed by, it'll go more easily. I don't have to worry about scaling a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so here's, here's what I'm thinking is that I get, let, let, let's call, let's define something, a, 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 a dy, right? Let's define that as new position minus drag position because that's the change in the position right that's what we're adding to the objects position so here's what i'm thinking is that we take this velwind.x and we say it's equal to velwind.x 
plus dy, so the amount you drag it by. And then I need to scale that in terms of the length. So let's have a global L0. So we'll have it drag the, the over the length of the rope just because that'll be visible on the screen. So this is going to convert um, excuse me. So this is going to convert uh, the how do I want to do this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to take V VW max divided by L0. Right, so this is going to convert the uh, this is going to convert the distance that it's dragged it into the velocity scaling. Okay, so that's great. So that's my VW max, but my VW max I define that in terms of the L0. So actually, I can leave that L0 out. Uh, yeah. Okay, and this way I can move it to positive or negative. Okay. Let's give that a try. I need to create my wind slider. Let's create that wherever we make the um, surfaces. <clears throat> so let's do this here. Uh, create wind slider control. And what we'll do here is we'll say wind slider equals. Uh, let's make it a box. Uh, let's actually, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's go ahead with a box of, let's see. I want it to be wider in the x direction. So let's make it about the same. Let's make it smaller than this. So let's make it uh, 0 0.25 times n atoms times L0, just so that it's like a quarter of the size of one of the horizontal boxes, comma 0 0.2, comma 0 0.25 times n atoms times L0. Oh, I need to tell it that that's the size, excuse me. Um, size equals that. Not negative. There we go. Position equals, we want this one to go out to the left. <clears throat> so let's have a negative 1.75 times n atoms times L0. And let's go 0, 0. Let's see what that does. So there's the position. Color equals red. Oh, excuse me, color equals color dot red. Right. I think that's all I need. Visible is true by default. Okay, let's see if this works. See what error, meaning we'll see what errors we get. Okay, so there's the wind. Or actually, no, there's no wind. My wind is set to be zero. I click and drag this, and it doesn't seem to be moving. I can click in here. Okay, so something's gone wrong to where I've lost my ability to click. What did I do wrong up here? <clears throat> Scene.bind, mouse down, grab. And that's within the grab event, okay. Scene.bind, mouse move. Oh, um, I might have messed it up with, well, not necessarily. Um, oh, oh, uh, do, 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 do. So dropping is doing that. Let me double check over here how I set up the scene.bind. Uh, scene.bind, mouse down, grab. Okay. All right, that's for a room delete, excuse me. Room select, let's go to def grab. <clears throat> okay, so I'm looking through here to remind myself of what order I need to put the scene.bind command in. And okay, so let's look for where I move stuff around. So like, for example, here's where I move. 
So it's got mouse move, move, mouse up, drop. That's what I have over here. <clears throat> and if it's picking the wind slider, mouse move, move, mouse up, drop, mouse move, move, mouse up, drop. Okay, and that's after that part. So that's correct. Um, where do I first do the grab? See, that's under room delete. I'll probably cut this part out as I search. Select. Scene dot bind mouse down grab. Okay, I had to put that down at the bottom. Oh, oh, I see what I did wrong. I, I put this inside the function that needed to be back out there. I, I, I thought I had misindented that. Okay, this is back to normal now, so let's try. Oops, okay, so it doesn't like me grabbing onto this. Or it doesn't seem to mind me clicking on it. It doesn't seem to like me dragging it. Um... Unsupported operand type for float and vector. Okay, so one of these is a float and one of them is a vector. So what happened to VW max? <clears throat> I did not make that a vector. VW max. Go VW max. Okay. Velwind. Oh, oh, oh. DY is um is the is a vector. Oops. So let's make that dot y. Okay, let's try that again. All right, we're gonna let this thing. Float around, okay. We'll make it make the wind blow the other way. Okay, cool. So I've got this thing to slide. The question now is whether it's actually adjusting the wind. Uh, so here's what we'll do. Let's make this thing as large. Let's make this thing really large in the left direction. So I noticed that the candy is not floating in the left or excuse me to the right but it's floating to the left let's try cutting it I should see if there's a wind it blowing to the left some uh, not really okay <clears throat> so now the question is whether it's actually adjusting the vel wind so here I need to have an indicator so let's look for where we define vel wind I'm going to create an arrow that that indicates that so we're going to have wind arrow. Uh, I believe you just call that arrow. And let's have it have a position of, oh, let's make it the, where's the floor? I call some, I call the, okay, yeah, yeah, the floor here. So the surface list of end surfaces. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is so that way it's below where all the action is going on. <clears throat> Position equals that. Uh, axis equals velwind. Oh, and then I need a color equals color dot white just so it stands out. Cool. And then what I need to do, I need to go back up here. Where do I define this dy? Okay. So now what I need is a global wind arrow, arrow, wind arrow. And what I need to do now is whenever I update velwind, I need to update wind arrow.axis equals velwind. Save. Right, let's try that. Uh oh. Oh, uh, da, 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 da. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I can't have a position equal to a box. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> dot pause. There we go. Let's try that again. All right. Where are you? Oh, right. Because you are nothing at first. Okay. So this is... 
Okay, so there is a wind. Okay, but it is... It, I have to drag really, really far to get that. So I obviously need to work on the um, on the scaling there. So let's see what happens. Because right now I've got a wind point in the left. So I should see it blow off to the left more than to the right. <clears throat> and that is, in fact, what I see. Awesome. Okay, I need to work on the scaling for this thing, though. <clears throat> So let's see, where is, where do I have that set up? Cool, so I've got it to where the slider controls the wind. It's not a very good slider because it's moving left and right, so I'm gonna have it only change its Y position. Um, where do I get my, where do I get my DY? There it is. Um, let's see, so one thing I need to change is the scaling for this thing. <clears throat> Let's make that maybe a 10 times this. Um, okay. And then what I need to do is I need to change the slider to where it's only moving in the Y direction. <clears throat> and I think the way I'm gonna do that is set up a dot DY here and then just have this be, um, the Y is here. So I suppose all I really need to do is put a DY in here and then move this up. Oh no wait, I only want that to be the case if it's this thing, because there may be something else that I want to drag in all three dimensions later. Um, <clears throat> so let's set that up to be, uh, let's undo that. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the way I'll do this is object.position.dy object plus equals dy, and then what I'll do is I'll say else, and then we'll have this one. So if in the future I wanna uh, change something's position in the x and y direction, then I can adjust this thing All right and otherwise <clears throat> excuse me uh, then you're right then I can just adjust this thing uh, and otherwise it'll only change the Y cool so now when I click and drag this thing oops vector has no attribute DY what did I do Um, oh, excuse me, that needs to be a Y. Got a little DY happy, there we go. And let's try cutting the rope here. I said cut, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so there's wind blocking it going that way. And now what I can do is I can slide this up and try to blow it directly into the box there, maybe, maybe. You can do it. Well, here's where I'd probably cut it and it would fall and game over, cool. I can still adjust this because that doesn't know that the game is ended, but the, the candy has stopped moving, cool. So uh, let's see. Now the only other trick is I haven't really incorporated this maximum and it seems like the maximum might actually, uh, so let's try this. So let's try maximum between this and VW max. See how frustrating that becomes. So I'll cut this thing is gonna swing. It's not quite gonna make it in. So let's try giving it some wind to the right. Oh, cool, I won the game. Uh, let's see, how high can I take this thing up? Because hmm. this thing should be reaching the maximum at some point. Hmm. Maybe I haven't reached a maximum. Um, <clears throat> Uh, 
velwin.x. Okay. Um, so actually, the way I want to do this is uh, I need to check whether this thing is blowing to the left or the right. So I want to have if velwin.x is less than zero, then it's equal to, or excuse me, it's greater than zero, and then it's equal to this thing. And otherwise, you need to do the same thing, but with a minimum here and a negative here. Now I'm also not happy with the positioning of the arrow, so I think I'll move that up. Um, so let's actually have that one's position. Let's actually have that one's position be just above the top of the rope. So for example, the way I could do that would be uh, atom, what is it, atom list? What do I call my list of atoms? Atom list, yeah. Atom list of one dot pause plus vector zero. Let's put it up a couple of atom lengths. <clears throat> there we go. Let's go to the five. And so now when I do the sliding here, hmm, doesn't seem to want to, whoa, what did I just do? Uh oh, oh, you know what? I probably miscoded the um, max and min business, oops. Uh, maybe I should leave that out. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Actually, no, you know what? I know a better way to do this. I know a better way to do this. We're going to leave out the max for here. So we're going to change it to that. But then what we're going to do is we're going to say if absolute value of velwin.x is greater than v, oops, need to get rid of that part. VW max should have been a greater than. There we go. Then what I'll do is I'll say velwin.x equals sign of. Does it know sign? Sigin? No, maybe not. Okay, well then what we'll do is we'll say uh, velwin.x divided by absolute value of velwin.x times VW max. Okay, so what that's doing here is it's saying, okay, take whether it's positive or negative and multiply it by VW max. That way it ends up being VW max in whatever direction the wind's already pointing. I think that's better. So let's see, let's cut here. So if I go down this way, it becomes negative. Oh, okay, the issue is, is that I haven't set VW max to be very large. Okay, so I do need to change VW max apparently. Uh, let's up that by a factor of 10. <clears throat> uh, let's see here, let's cut this, slide up this way. Ooh, almost. Okay, so that is the maximum there. Uh, let's see. I need to get this thing blowing that way. Does this thing go any stronger? Nope, nope, that is apparently the strongest this thing goes to. Hmm, okay, well then let's, I guess let's up that to like five or something. <clears throat> I don't think that would have been too high, but, whoa, that is too much. Yeah, okay, so somewhere in between there, I'll play around with that off camera. Um, but the good news is we've incorporated wind, we've incorporated a controllable wind into the program. So what I'll do off camera is I'll add in a little indicator for the sliders, a little vertical bar here and a little, you know, text thing that says, uh, you know, click and drag to change wind. Um, obviously we've got it too strong at five, but too weak at about one. So, you know, and, and again, that would probably depend on the game scenario that one developed. Uh, there we go. That one's strong enough to win easily. So probably like a one and a half or something would be fine for this game. Uh, so I'll put a little note here. Change with game. There we go. 
So anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. This continues to be a fun game to try out. So what we'll do next time is we'll try making uh, some more interesting scenarios to try out with our new wind controller. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.